where we left yesterday. So last day we had seen the creation of how we create an HTML page, the structures, and we have added in images. This is just for a recap. So all the all the how to add in various tags uh, that are available, we have just had a glance over here. Just for a recap, we had created a template where we have created a doc tags. We have explained how metadata works. How do you add in external links or external style sheets and elements inside it? While creating a structure, what are the necessary semantics that we should be following during the creation of the nav? You should be giving a nav. When you are creating a header, it should be wrapped within the header tag. For other sections, it should be as a section. And then for the content, which actually represents the main data of the site, has to be wrapped inside a main tag. And that should be only a single main tag. And so on and so forth. We have other tags as well. Today, let us see how to have them styled it. So yesterday, we have seen this is the output that is coming up. Everything is broken, horizontal scroll bar here and there, because we don't have any styling applied to it. Okay. So let's get started. We are creating a CSS file. Ooh, we typically maintain a CSS folder. And inside the CSS folder, we are naming it. Name could be anything. Okay. So I'm naming it style.css. It could be name.css, or it could be anything pertaining to the names that uh, you want to decide. So once you have the style.css created, and if we have a glance at the folder structure, we have the style.css. Now over here, we will not start directly adding in CSS. What we'll do is we'll create another file over here called uh, and we'll name it rad.css. Okay. So traditionally, what is what used to happen is we create a CSS file, and inside the CSS file, we start doing our styling part. Okay, and all the uh, all the color codes or the font size or the font family, we typically go and write it. You must have seen a lot of CSS in your life, right? So, but what uh, the advanced CSS does is uh, instead of doing it in the static manner, we will be converting them into a variable. So all the data will be stored inside a variable. Advantage is that uh, in case of need, we will be able to simply change uh, the color or the font family, and it will get reflected everywhere without us going down and manually altering each and every line of code in CSS. Okay. So for that, let's start. We are building something called root. Root is the root level of your dog. Okay. So when we are having this run, <clears throat> so absolutely starting from the body element, we are referring it as to the root of the entire structure. Here, let us create variables. So hyphen hyphen. You have to, in CSS, when you are creating variables, you have to declare hyphen hyphen, and then you say the name of the variable. Okay. It could be anything. I am naming it primary. And you apply a color code to it. Okay. So, for example, I say dash. And then I give it a secondary. So let's name it uh, let's take um, dash. Other codes I'm giving an arbitrary result also to break the uh, let us make this this color, and then this color. So this is an advantage of the VS Code. We can just uh, have this, and uh, we can pick colors from here. Okay. So typically, we don't uh, generally take up colors like this, uh, we would be getting our branding guidelines and all those things. There are something called color contrast. So yesterday, we also briefly discussed something about uh, something called accessibility and uh, 
for this uh, we have to also take into consideration the color contrast okay so this you will be getting in from the generally from the ux team okay as the designer team now these are the primary secondary and tertiary variables that we have created in addition to this you can create a lot of other variables as per your need okay i can further break it down to a lot of other variables uh, as well let's check we say the uh, family okay mm, font default font or or let's take we name it uh, body font okay so for body font let us pick we are saying go to fonts.google.com and uh, let us take a okay that looks good and let's take inside lato i hope everybody is aware of fonts.google.com so this is uh open source font library where we can use this for our uh, personal as well as commercial purpose so there are other font families uh, font libraries as well we have adobe is also but it is paid one so depending on the organizations what uh, you are subscribing for you will be getting all those information from the design team generally we do not uh, you do not go forward and choose your own font without the consent of the designs okay so let's take we take this i said select, select regular and then i say select uh, old okay so these are the two variants so this is your lato is your font family and these are your variants okay that you are absorbing over here and uh, now let us see so this is my font family so I say this is my font family. <clears throat> and uh, this one you would be needing it. Okay. You have to copy this, and this entity goes into your HTML file. So, okay, we are done. We have included the font family and we have included the link ref and now we have selected two variants okay now this is for the font uh, for the body and let us take us something else for the heading okay we want to use two types of font variants uh let's take for the heading let's get, uh, go for this it would be drastically different so you will be able to easily distinguish what's happening so we are taking it this one the regular so same way let's have this copied and over here in the variable you will say say header font okay or if you want to name it uh, in a proper manner uh, different manner also it we can say is like font body and uh, font header anyway okay whichever is comfortable or whichever sounds good okay uh, but make sure when you're starting off this doesn't start with a capital or a numeric or a symbol the same logic goes in for all of our programming languages and let us have this copied inside the html so now if i do a refresh i don't see any changes right why? Because we have not given a call to this particular font. Okay. So it is still in the default font family, if we see. Okay. Nothing is there. So now what you have to do is you have to import your style.css over here. So I would say link href css style.css is equal to style sheet. Okay. And with this, there is also something we will pass in saying media screen. Okay, there are various types of medias. What are these medias for? So, when uh, in your working field, if you are working, uh, you will be encountering that uh, we would be <coughs> working with CSS for a lot of other areas as well. Okay, there is something called print also, CSS print. So, many of time for our product, if you are thinking about the product of the when we are working in the learning bit, a lot of time there are requirements where the page needs to be printed. 
So we have every have a particular section in the application where we, the user wants to hit a control P and the page will get rendered. Or if you have ever visited some sites like e-commerce sites or your passport or visa site where you want to do some print, you do have a control P and you will see that everything gets into a different kind of a layout. It everything turns into black and white, uh, all the header footer, all the other elements which are not necessary for the print gets uh, vanished off. So for that particular scenario, we have to create a different style sheet and we have to name it as media print. Okay. So this means various uh, media stylings are there. We will say media screen. Yeah, this is done, but still nothing will reflect. Okay, right now, if we go to the head and have a look at it, we'll see the style sheet has been called in, but nothing appears. Why? Because inside the style sheet, we have not called in anything. Now, what we do is we will call this variable inside this style sheet. I'll say import and import URL and inside the import URL, I will say mart.css, okay? You could have done it this way or you could have created another link out here and called in the variable dot, uh, variable dot CSS for the stuff's work, okay? This process is also correct and the way we are doing it, that is also correct. We generally prefer to keep one CSS and over here, from here, we will be calling it. Here, let us write body. So that is body means this particular tag. So when we are writing CSS, we can write CSS in multiple ways. Okay, multiple ways means we can attach the CSS in multiple attributes. Okay, CSS can add it directly to tags. to class and ID class will start okay. dot dash CSS can be applied so yesterday we had a look at the roles okay we had a glimpse of roles also like role search or like we can also track in roles uh, and arias also. Okay, so we, there are various types of arias like aria expanded, true, false, and depending on that, we can have our uh, CSS supply. So these are the various ways we can do it. Okay, so let's take uh, let's go one by one. Let's say font family. Okay, and inside the font family, we have all the list over here. So instead of this choosing from the list, what we'll say we'll say bang. Okay. So here, this is how we declare the variables, OK? I'll write the comments for you all. Declaring variables. And with the var option, what we are doing is we are calling it, OK? Use the variable. Now inside this var, what we'll say dash dash, and the moment you say dash dash, these are features of VS Code. It will you know, automatically show you why because you have already linked it. Now, when you have linked it, it will automatically fetch what are the variables that are available. So for the font body, we we'll say body font is this one. Okay, let us save and have a glance that whether it is working or not, and the font family changed. Style dot CSS has been called in. Font family var is there, and now what you get to see is inside this. Now you see the root appearing. Okay, previously this root was not coming in, and inside the root you will be able to see all the list of variables that you have declared. 
tomorrow when we will be doing bootstrap framework we will see that there are other roots variables uh, which are present in the bootstrap okay and you can also use them or you can override those with your same name and uh, you can override them okay any doubts so far before we proceed any doubts in the variable creation or with this no, we are good. Okay, I take that as yes. Okay, now you declare what you want. Font size. Font size. There are various units that are available in the when for when we declaring a font size. Okay. Font size units. We have pixels. We have em. We have rem. We have uh, percent. So these all are there. Uh, typically, we would like to use the rem. Okay, so I say one rem. Now, if you ask how do you make the conversion, so simply use go to ex to rem unit converter and choose there a lot of uh, stuff. Okay, so from for here, you just take I say sixteen pixel is equal to how much rem? It would be one rem. Okay. I want to use 12 pixels. So what I will do is this is 0 0.75 RAM. So this way you will get the RAM unit. Okay. So typically, if your base font is at 16, okay. So if you're using the base font to 16, then you can. But if you want to change the base font and uh, all do the alteration, that is also possible. Okay. So let's take. Uh, I want to have it 14. 14 and do a calculation. So this is my rem so i say my body font would be this much uh so, so you see i just removed a zero from the in front of the decimal so whenever we are adding something with a decimal value and if the first value is zero like we have learned in maths you don't have to really specify this okay plus if you are adding that what will happen is in our sonar cube it becomes a it's rendered as a tech depth okay it will give you as a code smell or the code improvement all those uh, issues will come in so while you are writing the CSS, do also keep this in mind. And now let's take, I will say color. Okay, do remember color is not font color. This many people make some mistake saying that uh, color is font color, but it is actually just color. Okay. And I will say dash dash, let's take primary. So we had declared the primary as green, so all our stuffs are converted into green. Okay. Now let's create uh, for the heading tags. Okay. What we can do is uh, there are two processes. Either you directly select, so like say, I say H1, H2, H3, H4, and H5. And all of this will have font how many? Font header. Now you see all the fonts have changes changed only for the heading tags. Okay, we had used H1 and H2 in our in our uh, design, so this has got converted to the font family that we declared okay so now what we are seeing is we are seeing directly we have applied tags okay so first thing what we said uh, css can be directly applied to tags correct and this is how we have done it we have directly applied css to tags uh, but i for font family this is okay Okay, but for the styling purpose, when you are actually writing a style, I would never recommend you directly writing it on the uh, tag itself. Why? Because for uh, for example, let's take uh, today. This is H one and this is H two. For some reason, uh, there has been another injection over here which has become H two, and this needs to be converted into H three. And if you have written your styling directly based on H three, then what will happen? Is like if you're changing it from H2 to H3 on the tag basis, your styling will also change. But if it's a class base, then even if the tag changes, 
you will not have to actually uh, look in for you will not actually have to look in for uh, to go down and change this particular stuff okay so that's the advantage okay any doubts so far any questions okay let's proceed now let us now let us start uh, getting this framed out okay so the variable declarations are there in place now let us come down so what we have done is we have created a div inside this div we have three more elements so this has to be adjusted okay so let's name this this is we name it as stock nav okay so, okay, so CSS naming we always uh, prefer using it as an hyphenated stuff. Uh, you should not start with a capital letter or it should not start with a number. And uh, you can do it like this camel casing, but typically we prefer to use it as a hyphenated stuff. Okay. Just give me a moment. Uh, okay, this is we have set top nav. I name it class. Let's name it navigation. Let us say this is a logo section. This is logo. And this is on the class over here. We'll say it. Uh, let's take uh, such. So three classes we have created. Now uh, let's see. Let's go down and see. I'm leaving some space over here. We might use it for something else. Over here, what I will say is. Uh, so now you understand, uh, if you don't say anything, by default, it would be a vertical stacking for everything, OK? Like what we are saying. So now we want to have it side by side. So for that, what we'll do is there are various methods to do it, OK? One, we can use something called float. Okay, We could use a float left and float right and have this position. Else, we can have it uh, with display. So there are a lot of areas to display, like display flex is something which is very popular and we use it widely. So with display flex, we can do it. We can also do it with display grid, or we can also use there is something called position, though it is not very much recommended. Okay. So out of all this, flex is the best one that we're choosing for now. So I say display flex. Okay. So the moment I see display flex, you see everything started coming in a horizontal fashion. Okay. Now what I do is uh, let me add some colors or outlines to them so that you can understand what is what. Okay. 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 For this navigation, I could have used uh, really the nav tag also. Okay. But say, as we discussed, that it is always better to you do it as a class in a class name. Okay, so that's why we are using a name. And you see, you are being given a red red marker out here. This is for the sonar link again happening because you do, should not be having some empty CSS rules created. Okay, so if you are checking out your files like this, then the sonar uh, code smells will be increasing. Okay, let us give a outline. And you can use the van, or we just save black. So this is just for your understanding. In real, real life, you will not be doing it. Outline outlines are generally used. Uh, we will be using outline uh, majorly for the focusing purpose. Okay, I'll show you that as well. Uh, so, but this is just for you to understand. 
I am creating outline here, outline here, and outline here. So let us see. Now you can visualize. Okay. So this is one block, another block, and another block. So let us refer back to that design that we were referring yesterday. This one. OK, so we have this and this and this. Okay. Uh, OK, so this is in one section, and these two are in a separate group. So we'll make a slight structural alteration. And what we'll say, this is one div. And this is another div. This div will wrap this div. Okay. Let's name it Paul B. And let us say this is Paul A. Okay. Okay. Make sure you add a semicolon at the end, okay? Otherwise, again, in the sonar, you will be getting a problem. I keep referring back to Sonar because that is one of our crucial checklist parameters. So what we have done is we have created one block here, and we have wrapped everything over here in one block. Okay? Now, as per the design goes, this is in the left-hand side, and this entire set is on your right. So what we'll say with the display flex, we'll have a property called ally justify content. Okay, We'll say justify content, and we'll say Space between. Okay. Easy. The moment you say space between, it will go over here and it will go over here. So with justify, there are a lot of a uh, lot of stuffs. Okay, you can have it on the baseline, center, and uh, you want it to be at the uh, start of it or the end of it. All those things. Okay, you want to have it uh, spaced evenly. You want to have it stressed out. All those things are there. Uh, so if you want to have a further reading on this uh, stuff, so we already have some uh, CSS training that have been done in, and uploaded in 25 blogs. The identity team to share the links, or if I can, I will share it myself. Or for the further studies, you can go to cssstricks.com. It's a very beautiful site maintained by Chris. And over here, you can search say, Flex. And This is a beautiful article uh, he has created where he has explained everything. Okay. All these stuffs. Sorry, we failed. There is some connectivity issue, but uh, everything is in depth, detailed out over here. Okay. What is grow, grow, flex, grow? What is flex? How to, when do you play? All those stuffs. Okay. So I will definitely share this link with you all. OK, now let's work on this one. So now this has, again, got wrapped down. But again, we have to have it side by side. So what we'll say is, again, we have to say Paul B will also have as a display flex. OK? Now it is also coming side by side. Correct? Any any doubts so far? Any, any questions, anyone, before we proceed? No? All good? OK, I take that as a yes. OK. So our logo is over here. Let us give a logo some structure. OK. Before giving the fine tuning, let us first get uh, the structure right. Okay. What I will say is, uh, if you have IMG tag, I will say the width should be and max width would be 100%. So now you see the overflowing stuff has stopped. Okay. Now you don't see the horizontal scroll bar. 
uh, what did this do? What I said is maximum width of this image could be 100% only. Okay. So the moment you say this, now if your browser is getting reduced, Now, if your browser is getting reduced, the image will also start shrinking with your browser. Okay, it will it will increase and decrease with your browser because we have locked it within the max container. Okay, and since the width is set to auto, it is setting the width of that particular element automatically. Okay, now let us uh, work on this. What we have. Uh, this section we have. OK, so I have seen display flex is being used a lot of time. So what we do is instead of writing display flex, display flex so many times, let us create a class. OK, and let's say display flex. And we'll go to the HTML. It reflects, reflects, reflects. Typically, we don't apply anything on the main. Okay, let the main be as it is. So we will do it with the reflex over here in the section. And then another stuff reflex over here. And also for the footer, we need the reflex. So now something, something of a structure we can see. Okay. Okay. It has gone over here and all those things. Okay. Don't worry about this. We'll take care. Okay. Now, um, what we'll do is, uh, so for this also, if you want, you can have this modified or move it to a separate CSS file, OK? And let's take, we name this as, uh, what we name it as uh, render CSS or like uh, common CSS, OK? Common rules. CSS and uh, what we'll do is we'll simply import them. I'm bring, uh, breaking it down into further just for your tutorial purpose. You, if you want, you can do it in one also. But it's always good if you break it down into multiple, so we will be able to track it better. Okay, so all the rule sets that you want to apply, we'll just have it in the under the common rule set and let us make it as a class. We'll say justify space between. Justify space space between, and then you just simply go down and apply it to wherever you want it. We wanted this over here, and we wanted this over here. Okay. Oops, and uh, what is this? Okay. Now, this has uh, come over here. That is happening because there is no width assigned to it. Okay, so once since you don't have a particular width assigned, it is automatically considering since with display flex, it has to bring it to side by side. It is making its own room and moving up. So what we'll do is we'll create a width for this. Okay, so we say a blue width 100 percent. And, uh, all A also with 100%, B also with 100%, with 100%. And which one has moved up? Under the main section. Okay. This, uh, let's take, we named it service. Dot. Yes. If you want to debug, since it did, did not happen, what we can do is we can simply have this debug. You go over here. So all of you know this debugging tool. Simply, if you put it over here, you will get to see what is happening. Okay, And with uh, Chrome also, you can have this all the properties. So if you don't know which is what, they are giving you a visual 
editor kind of a stuff by which you can do the various stylings and all those things. Okay. And whatever you select from here, you can just simply carry forward it to your stuff uh, to your main stuff. Okay, this has created a problem. So we did not notice. We did not assign the unit. Okay. The unit had to be assigned. Okay, now it looks good. Now the main part comes in. I say background. This hello. Okay, this is here. But this one has left the body. Good design. Where is the good design? Is there a problem in the structure? Uh, okay, this has missed out. This was part of the header. Okay, okay. This is we will do it as a position absolute and bring it over top. That's why it is there. Uh, okay, what I will do is first say we say position relative over here. So this is a good tool, right? What we can do is we can work over here and easily have it carry forward it. Say position. position absolute if uh, this helps i'm popping it out so that you all can see this okay now when you are giving a position absolute this is a very key feature everybody please remember this uh, the pos whenever you are giving it a position absolute that means you are fetching that particular object or you're making that object to the top of the layer okay by default, imagine everything is being stacked on one top, uh, one top of the another. Okay, and there is something called Z index. All of you must have heard about Z index. Okay, so Z index is something that is called something as a layer. By default, all, all the elements that are present in the DOM, their Z index is zero. The moment I pass in the Z index over here one, so what it happens? It comes down to the above layer. So all of these elements have become zero. By default, they are zero. Z index zero. Okay, but the moment I am giving one, it comes on top of everyone. Okay. Now, uh, whenever we are using a position absolute, the parent tag or the parent wrapper element, be it a div or the other uh, HTML semantic, HTML5 semantic should be having a position relative okay if you don't give this then what will happen with, with in this one it will not happen because it is particularly moving with uh, within the particular container but if uh, you have given it uh, in somewhere else which doesn't have a parent relative so typically if you are zooming out or zooming in the pos this position absolute element will start moving away from the container you must have seen many a times that the content is over here in a higher resolution. This particular element has moved over here. Okay. So the solution is the wrapper diff should be having a position relative. Okay. Now we have this. Now you want to give in something, something, whatever you want. Let's say I don't want victory with to be 100%. I say weight is 50%. And then this has to be applied to the center. I say I can move it with. Uh, from the left, I say 50%. And then there is a margin. There are various methods to do this. Okay, margin left, and I say a minus 200 pixel value and have this aligned like this. Okay. Or uh, this is one of the uh, options. Or you can do is you can say transform, and from there you say translate. From x axis, how much you want to move it from the x axis? I'd say, like, uh, around, I want to move it at 200 pixels or 300 pixels. You can do it with RAM also. I'd say, I want to have it at 24 RAM. Okay. So you see, the width is moving. Why is the width moving? Because we have given it at percentage. So if you don't want to have it expanded or decreased as per the screen resolution, you can lock it in a particular width percentage. Okay. I say 500 width percent, and uh, then if I zoom out, it is moving out. So we'll have to fix those all those things. Okay. So this kind of a transform translate. If you want to use the translate altogether, what we can do is we hit this, and then we say 4m. Okay, and translate. I say this is. RAM and this is also as a RAM. Okay. 
So this comes in. So whatever we have done, let us just simply copy this and paste it. Uh, so this section, let's name this section. Uh, we say Jumbo Text. Jumbo TXT. Naming could be anything. Okay. So it is applied. Okay, the one we have done. Now, if you want to increase the font size and all those things, then you have to do it. Uh, you can do it in the inspect element and you can get it back as well, whichever is comfortable. So, for example, you say font size would be 3 rem, for example. Okay. Let's give it a background. By default, the P tags would be font size would be like, for example, 16 px. These are like highlighting text, or you want to have it as 20 px. So these are the important text that you want to show over here. Okay. So what we can do is let's we'll go over here and we'll name it. Okay. Now you see H1. We have already used the H1 over there as a tag, and we have defined a uh, defined a attribute of that h1 also we have to define the font family but here what we will do is instead of uh, you referring to let's make it a class simply the name could be h1 only the class okay or you can say it as a primary header font or something like that so i am adding it over here it doesn't need to be here as well but it's a writing pattern we generally follow okay uh, club set so like all the uh, heading elements first, and then your sections, your main body, and the footer last. That way, we just don't follow. Also, you can, if you want, you can transfer them to another CSS file for better management. Okay, for the font size, we set around 5 rem. And inside this, we have a text, so we can name this as a header text. But header text and the font size was around how much we choose 20. So we can go back to like what would be 20 for us, and it would be 1.25. Okay. So we can say 1.25. I save, I refresh, everything looks good. Okay, this has become a too big. So you can do some further adjusting if you want. Um, it's fine. It's three rem. Any doubt so far? Are we good? Okay, now we had created the navigation. I'll just give you a moment, please. Okay, now, now let us go down and see into the navigation. So, where was the nav? Here, okay. You and li, let's make another li over here. Let me clean this off. I am doing some cleanup. So, what let us make this li? This is another li.
Let's see, guys, see, this is a long fact. So you have all of this. Now let's create the navigation part. So let's go down to the navigation. And let us say, same stuff. You say display flex. Oh, sorry. We had already created the display flex as a class. So instead of falling in over there, we just say display flex out here. And uh, Navigation, okay. Now inside the navigation, navigation is having bullets, okay. So we will say uh, inside the navigation, you have UL and LI, let's say this child type as none. Bullet went, went off, and uh, here also we say D hyphen flex. Everything coming side by side, and now you want to justify space between. You say and uh, now what we'll say is flex. Sorry, uh, navigation will I? I will say, let me make this as a different point. We say this is as a nav. Added a class over here called nav. And inside the dot nav, I say, justify content between. Sorry, sorry, I missed uh, full stop. No, just quickly check what happened. Why is the dot coming in? A lot of time. Sorry. Because we had created it as a nav, then the UL entity will not be there. Okay. So that is how we are creating. Okay, let me show you on the anchor state and button state. How will you make it? So what we'll say is dot nav and then inside this if you have anchor. So if you have anchor, I'm saying the colors would be, for example, var and what are the colors? Let's take secondary. Colors would be secondary dot nav a colon. Now, typically for hover, everybody write, writes it like this. Okay, so hover and then you write focus and all those things. Or generally, if you forget to write the focus as well. So instead of writing it this way, what you will be saying is not. Okay. So what we are saying, nav bar, inside nav bar, if you find an anchor tag, and if that nav anchor tag is not having the class disabled, okay. And then if you are having a hover on it, then your color should change to something, XYZ, whatever. Let's take uh, color classes, what we had, tertiary we have, okay. So I say the color should be tertiary. So what I said is nav bar, where if you have the nav class and inside the nav class, you have an anchor tag and the anchor tag is not disabled, okay? So now understand something, anchors cannot have the attribute called disable. Okay. So there is a disable attribute, okay? This cannot be applied. This is applied on button. So a button can have the attribute called disable. So if I apply this, what will happen, you see, it will be in a disable mode. You see the button is now in a disable mode. But anchor for anchor tags, you cannot have that. So how to make an anchor tag disable? So for that, we handle this dynamically and we pass a class called disable. Okay. And then, then 
but with this disablement also when you have a href property you will be able to do a tab and the focus will land over there and if somebody goes and does a click as well then also it will work so for example if i say uh, dot nav a <coughs> sorry anchor is disabled so the color is for example gray okay I save this. And you see, it is visible. It looks visible. Okay, it looks absolutely visible. But if I hover on it, it's happening. A hover is happening. If I do a tab, the tab is also happening. Okay, so this should not happen. So what I'm, what we have to do is for anchor. Remember this the word anchor. Okay, so for anchor, you will be passing a class called visible, and then you will be saying something called tab index as minus one. Okay which will not give us the option to do any tabbing on it now you see the tab is not landing on the home okay but still i can see the anchoring happening okay i can still see the anchoring happening and the clicking stuff so what we'll say is another thing we'll say is cursor disable so not allowed So now you see it is happening that it shows but still clicking on it actually something happened okay trigger happened so dynamic programmatically what we have to do is we have to make this href empty okay or we just destroy this href property altogether okay dynamically for button it is easy just if you pass in this visible attribute then it is all done you don't have to worry about it okay so now going back to the style and let's write in a uh, any questions so far before we proceed? No? Nobody asked me why I did it like this with A and then the full stop without a space over here. Can anybody tell me why there is no space? Uh, it will directly apply to anchor tag. Partially correct. But see, if I just do a space over here and let's render the result and see. suddenly what happened it turned green now we are saying that class is no more applied over here why it is not applied understand this logic very well okay when you are having a class and that class you are referring to a particular tag and that that class is in the same level of the tag same level okay that point of time you have to attach this class with that particular tag so to attach it, you cannot have a space between, okay? So this will refer means this disabled class always read from the right to left, okay? So this disabled class is actually in the same level of this anchor tag, okay? But you see over here, I said nav and a. So inside the nav, I'm saying anchor. Or let's say, for example, inside this navigation, I say nav. nav. So I say nav, uh, navigation and dot nav, and I make the background color. So for example, uh, red. Okay, just for an example. So now the background color is red. Now, if you see the structure, here we have the navigation. Where is the navigation? Here we have the navigation uh, navigation class, and the nav class is under it. Okay. So this is a waterfall. It's happening. So inside the nav is below the navigation. So that way we will be seeing it as a space. There will be a space. But if you remove the space, then the CSS will interpret that this navigation is in the same level of the nav. This would have worked if this class would have been here. Okay. But since the class is in the below layer, then you cannot give a space. Yeah. Any doubts? Uh, so you mean uh, when we want to apply any CSS for particularly tag or for particularly attribute, so then we'll attach in the same manner a dot disabled. If if your if your class means the two classes are in the same level, okay, that point of time, whether it could be anchor tag, it it could be as a tag base, 
or it could be as a normal class base like we are we are showing you Actually, let me show you another example that that will help uh, so inside navigation we create another class um, for example font size um, yeah let me do it in this way here okay font 14 for example just an example i'm giving it so now you want this nav inside this nav when they you have the font 14 it should behave in something so what i will say is dot nav dot font 14 and uh, let's take i say the for uh, not 14 let's make it font big okay why i'm removing it big because i don't want to constrain with that number so I say font size is, uh, let's take 18 px. So now the font size has increased to 18. Okay. Now the same font big, I will apply it over here. Um, let's take in this class. Okay. Now in the uh, not in this class, so better I apply it, uh, apply it to the heading. Where was the heading? So I say in this heading I say font big, and what I will do is I will make this font independent. I say font big and font size. Let's take uh, thirty six. Okay? And let me switch off the font from here for just a moment. <laughs> so now if we see this, now you see this font becomes 36, right? So now this is behaving independently, but now over here, uh, inside this nav, when we are attaching it, the same class is getting and behaving in a different manner. It has become 18. Or if you all right, want to make it less also, if I'm making it 12, you see this is not getting touched. Same class, but the way of writing it is behaving differently. Here we have attached it to a particular nested it with another class sorry not nested we have attached it with another class okay without that space and here we have kept it independent or we could have written it in so for example you say jumbo text inside jumbo text if the font is big uh, so i say sorry i say what is it uh, jumbo text so if it is under jumbo text and uh, then it will be font 36 it's coming font 36, right? But font big and jumbo are not in the same line. So it will not be having that uh, no dot, uh, no space in between. Here? Yeah? Yes. Hopefully, I hope so. But further readings would be needed. Uh, okay. So uh, clear so far? Uh, quickly, I take two more minutes. Okay, we'll just quickly do this. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> the time is very short. So, same way we'll apply display flex, and we'll say width is hundred percent over here. And this will we'll also say display flex width would be hundred percent. And let's uh, app. You don't need a flex wrap over here. This will also have display flex and flex wrap. Why is it not wrapping? Let with 100% instead of flex, we'll say display block over here. Oh. With 100% I'm taking in. 
Swap with display flex with 100%. You see the layout is coming up. Okay. So simply you have this, you see text align center. It is actually meeting what we are showing in. Okay. So now after that, you have to do those coloring and wrapping everything. And the same logic goes for this one and this one as well. Let us quickly put this into shape. We go to the common rules and we say flex. Wrap and HTML. So tomorrow we'll see another process by which our life will become smooth. Okay. Bear with me for today. So tomorrow onwards it will be quite smooth. Why we will start using frameworks. Okay. So this is under this R service. Where is R service? Uh, okay, let me show you one example with the ID as well. But this is not recommended. Just for an example purpose, I will say not. Recommended, so I've driven given this and deflex with wrap 100. So, which div did we track in? The column divs. So, we'll say class passwords deflex. You may write, but not recommended just for viewing purpose. I'm showing you this. I can write like this, okay? But this is absolutely or strictly no. This is only applicable if this is getting controlled dynamically, programmatically, okay? If you are changing the width or you're doing a calculation of the height, depending on the layout elements that are present in the stuff, then only we should be using an internal inline CSS. These are called inline. This is an example of an inline CSS. This is an example of inline CSS. These are external, external CSS. And there is something called internal CSS. So for that, what we can do is we say style and we say something. Okay. For example, body colors would be red. These are three examples I'm showing you, but only applicable so this is all red 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 coming in from over here it has got changed but this is coming from here okay but these this is absolutely not recommended not recommended this is only applicable if handling programmatically where did we get where was it style style Helps. We have already overshooted a lot. Uh, thank you, everyone. Any doubts? We pause it over here. Tomorrow we'll start off with uh, Bootstrap. Okay. Any doubts? Any questions before we wrap up? No. Somebody raised their hand. Yeah, I think the recording will um, get shared by the identity. And I will be sharing the course material as well, then whatever we have uh, written over here. Hey, any other questions? Oh, OK. Thank you, then. Thank you, everyone, for being such a lovely audience. See you tomorrow, same time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.